Welcome to Oncology Data Advisor. Today, I have the honor of being joined by Dr. Thomas Powells to discuss the results of the EV302 trial. Dr. Powells, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for inviting me. To start off, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us about what your work and your research focus on? Uh, I'm Tom Powells. I'm uh, a professor of urology cancer, and I'm the, the director of Bart's Cancer Center in London. And I do clinical trials in urology cancers, particularly urothelial and kidney cancer. Awesome. Excited to talk with you today. Nice to talk to you too. So for background, how has Enforcimab Vidotin been used in urothelial carcinoma previously, and what is this EV302 trial investigating? Enforcimab Vidotin is an antibody drug conjugate. Antibody drug conjugates are a new class of cancer drugs. Essentially, there are three components. There's an antibody, a linker molecule, and a payload. Cancer cells overexpress a number of proteins. The antibody targets those proteins and therefore attaches itself specifically to the cancer cell, a bit like a homing missile. The molecule is then internalized and the linker molecule then removes the antibody from the payload, which releases the payload into the cancer cell. And that payload then destroys the cancer cell by different mechanisms, depending on how that uh, works. And fortumabidotin is a great example of an antibody drug conjugate. It targets Nectin-4. Nectin-4 is overexpressed in 98% of urothelial cancers. And MMAE is the payload, which is a microtubule disrupting agent. So essentially, you're delivering high concentrations of MMAE into bladder cancer cells and sparing the vast majority of the rest of the body. Now, MMAE is also expressed in other areas like skin. And therefore, the, the toxicity profile of antibody drug conjugate often follows the distribution of where the antibody is targeting. The drug is in um, development, and I'm going to talk today about a big randomized phase three that was positive. But in fortune, has been explored in a number of trials previously in urothelial cancer. Previously, it's been explored predominantly in an area of heavily pretreated patients. And those patients have been pretreated with chemotherapy and immune therapy, which is a standard of care. Classic chemotherapy, historically, is associated with about 10% response rates in those heavily pretreated patients. Phase one and phase two trials showed that in fortune was associated with a 40% response rate. That's much higher than we expected. The toxicity profile was manageable. The toxicity profile focused on skin toxicity, peripheral neuropathy, and hyperglycemia as three adverse events of special interest, and they continue to be adverse events of special interest. That prompted a randomized phase three trial of infortumab vedotin versus chemotherapy in this heavily pretreated population. The results of that randomized phase three trial showed a 30% reduction in the risk of death and confirmed that 40% response rate. Therefore, infortumab vedotin as a single agent became the standard of care. Intriguingly, in parallel, the drug was being combined with pembrolizumab, which is an immune checkpoint inhibitor. Pembrolizumab also has activity in urothelial cancer. It's well tolerated. And it appears that when you combine these two drugs together, Unlike when you combine chemotherapy and bladder cancer, you don't get antagonism. The two drugs seem to play well together, and you don't get any immune suppression from the infortumabidotin with the pembrolizumab. And therefore, the two together have response rates in the frontline setting in previously untreated patients of 68%. This was much higher than chemotherapy. Classic chemotherapy had response rates of about 45%. So looking at this 68% versus this 45%, we hypothesized that we could beat frontline chemotherapy with a combination of infortumabidotin and pembrolizumab. We did one more experiment before we launched the randomized phase three trial, and that's a study called Cohort K with Jonathan Rosenberg left. And in that trial, we tested single agent infortumabidotin versus the combination of infortumabidotin and pembrolizumab in previously untreated patients to prove that you needed to add the second drug. Otherwise, you'd say, why not just give infortumabidotin and maybe pembrolizumab at some point in the future? And in that randomized phase two trial, 
we clearly showed a higher response rate and more durable responses with a combination of the immune checkpoint inhibitor and, in, and infortumab vedotin versus infortumab vedotin alone. And so in summary, we have a really active single agent in heavily pretreated patients. We have proof that the addition of pembrolizumab, which is also active, to infortumab vedotin is better than the drugs by themselves. And therefore, we hypothesized that if you compare infortumab vedotin plus pembrolizumab to standard chemotherapy, which is the current standard of care, gemcitabine cisplatin or gemcitabine carboplatin, with or without maintenance of alumab, we would have higher response rates, longer progression-free survival, and longer overall survival. And that is the crux of EV302. Fantastic. Thank you so much. That was really helpful for understanding the mechanism of action and how Infortimab has been used. What were the efficacy results of the EV302 trial that were uh, just announced in the press release this week? EV302 is a large randomized phase three study. It enrolled a large number of patients, as you would expect in a big randomized phase three, who um, of patients who were previously untreated in the frontline metastatic or advanced setting with urethelial cancer. All patients had to have a histologically proven component of urethelial cancer, often known as bladder cancer. They also had to have a good performance status. They could not have had previous chemotherapy or immune therapy in a metastatic setting. Although some patients were allowed to have chemotherapy in the perioptive setting at the time of surgery. These patients could have no contraindications for infortumab vedotin, pembrolizumab, or chemotherapy. And we enrolled over 800 patients in a one-to-one -one manner. We had primary endpoints, progression-free survival, and overall survival, we also tested response. The trial recruited over a number of years. It's a multi-site, so over 200 sites around the world. And the results of the trial showed a striking progression-free and overall survival advantage, which are clinically meaningful. We also showed higher response rates. The data showed that the combination was tolerable and in line with expectations from previous combinations, which I described previously. We focus on these adverse events of special interest. The combination was active and we feel it's practice changing. That's amazing. Thanks so much for explaining the results. Um, so you mentioned it's, it's practice changing. What do you think these results will, will mean for the continued use of Infortimab as, you know, as time goes on? So my feeling is, and, and the feeling of my co-investigators, is that these results are um, transformative. Uh, the historical treatment with gemcitabine and platinum-based chemotherapy has been around for a generation. Um, 40 years ago, it hasn't been beaten previously. This is the first time that a new combination in unselected patients had an overall survival advantage in the first line metastatic setting. That's not been done previously. Uh, we've used immune checkpoint inhibition. Basically, currently the standard is a maintenance therapy after chemotherapy. It's important to recognize a high proportion of patients who took part in this trial in the control arm also had that maintenance therapy. And even with that, we showed significant overall survival, progression-free survival with tolerable results. And so overall, these transformative results will supersede chemotherapy in the relatively near future, in my opinion. It's amazing. Um, are there any next steps for the trial or other um, further analyses planned? So the answer is there are a number of next steps for the study. Uh, and the, uh, the data which we plan to present will look at the patients' characteristics, of course, the primary endpoints of the trials. Um, but there are other endpoints where we can look at subsets of patients. That includes those patients with immune-type biomarkers. Also, subsets of bone metastasis or visceral metastasis to see how they got on with the combination versus chemotherapy. There's a whole string of biomarker data which we can look at to try and identify the patients who benefit the most. Although I have to say, as I said previously, 
this was a, a trial which, which benefited broad subgroups of patients. And then, of course, um, it's important to recognize that there are a number of other trials within fortumab, rodotin, and pembrolizumab. The trials that I'm particularly excited about are those in the perioperative space. So I've talked about frontline metastatic disease, but there's also patients at the time of having their cystectomy an operation, they also can have neoadjuvant therapy and their trials comparing neoadjuvant their chemotherapy with infortumab, vedotin, and pembrolizumab. And if those trials reproduce the results of the trials of EV302, it's likely that this combination will not just supersede chemotherapy in the metastatic space, but will also supersede chemotherapy in the perioperative space. I also have to tell you that there are early phase one trials looking at infortumab vedotin intracyclically, so being squirted into the bladder. And those trials are also really exciting. So there's a plethora of different studies exploring the combination. And I think this is transformative in metastatic disease, but I think it will translate earlier in the disease setting as well. Great. It's really exciting to hear about all these avenues being explored, and I look forward to hearing results as time goes on. Fabulous. Thank you so much again for coming on today. It was wonderful to hear about these results of the trial. And, um, you know, thank you again for your time. It's kind of you to invite me. Thank you. <laughs>